It's these warriors. You see how many there are? They can really get in, and especially if they target Menlo, they can fuck you up. I'm not going to lie. They can seriously hurt you. That might, One of my Tengu's going to die. No. We got uh, an Angchu monk, which is helpful. That gives us a bit more defense, which is certainly needed. Ah, see, now everyone's just got caught in panic because of Raza. Did you see all that panic go off there? I'm caught in panic. Oh, I had panic on me. Shit. Definitely shouldn't have been casting near there. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. You need to start... See, this is the problem here. You need to kill the frontliners... But you can't be too close to the casters because if one of them's got panic, and or especially if you've got panic, you're just going to screw them all up. Oh no! And they've, they've got so much anti melee here. I'm actually holding out better than I thought I was going to. I, I honestly am. Uh, but now that I've said that, I'm sure I'll just get spiked out dead in just a moment's flat. See, I've got panic on me here. Shouldn't be too close to that flag. See, the other thing is when I'm when I'm in big fights like this, I feel like I shouldn't be near the flag. But the truth is, the heroes are spread quite far away from it anyway. So, like, I, I was at that flag, but the only person really in risk of panic there was Gwen. Shit, why didn't I use Death Blossom? There we go. Death Blossom, come on, there we go. Good. Oh my God, I survived this wave as well. I think there's like two waves left. Is there any news? Yeah, there was one thing I wanted to talk about, an idea I've had. Because the this law summary thing... Hold on, Menlo's speaking. He says, Stand strong, my brothers and sisters. The sick smile upon us this day. And you'll see an ally just running through that portal there and is running through. This is, only appears in hard mode. This only appears. And it's Sin. So Sin is here. We get to see Sin once again. You only see this in hard mode. She says, There you are. Did you honestly think you could hide from these? This is what all the effort's gone into. Uh, and Menlo says, Sin, I, I wasn't hiding. I, well, now is not the time. It, it's fortunate you've arrived. We're under attack. And Sin says, Bah, you always, you always have an excuse to avoid these conversations. I'm not going to wait around forever, you know. Remember what happened at Kieran and Gwen's uh, wedding where Sin was like, Oh, what, why aren't you interested in me? And uh, Menlo was like, just kind of hiding from her. And he says, Please, I beg of you, help us protect the monastery and I'll have whatever conversations you want. And Sin says, Oh no, you're not putting this off again. You're going to marry me. Our wedding will be nicer than Gwen's and you're going to like it. And Menlo says, I, but, but, and the worst thing about this bit of dialogue is I have to try and fight while they're going through this. Uh, and Menlo says, fine, Sin, will you marry me? And Sin says, what a wonderful surprise. Yes, a thousand times yes. Now get away from my man, you Sinsali savages. So this is pretty big, I'd say. There's a whole wedding, like this whole proposal you would not know about. This whole bit of lore of those two finally getting married only happens if you play through Winds of Change, not just part three, but every single bit of Winds of Change, because you can't unlock hard mode Winds of Change part three without doing part one and part two. This kind of huge wedding part of the, their story is only unlocked if you play in hard mode. And that, my friends, is one of the reasons why I did it. And it's pretty crazy. Now the Sin's here, we see the meteor showers going off all over the place. Oh, the hallmark of Sin. Uh, are we okay here? We're actually doing much better than I thought we would be. And I'm very happy. Anyway, yeah, this this other news. Um, I feel like I sh should probably have more to say about... Um, careful of all the minions. I don't want to waste my time fighting minions. Um, yeah, I, I feel like I should say more about the wedding, but really there's not that much to say. It's just that they get married. And I, I mean, a lot of people are looking forward to that. It kind of just tie, does tie the knot from what's started in prophecies. is just players speculating that something might be going on between them to slowly evolving through um, factions with that story of the twins that Menlo used to know and then through Nightfall and, and finally Eye of the North and then War and Crash. It just all leads up and eventually finally they, they've kind of sealed the knot. So I thought that was quite cool. Um, and Menlo says they just keep coming. There are so many. This is the last wave here. I believe when me and Mike played this we failed twice on this quest on the last wave both times which is... Uh, Annoying, but hey, that's what most games are structured like. The last wave is always the hardest. Uh, and we say if we hold them now, victory is ours. Our summoning stones effects have run out, but we still have two Angchu left alive. Oh, for the love of God, I hope there's something I can do. Shall I pop some more clovers? There we go. Oh, there's not anything else I can do. I can set a trap, I suppose. Oh, is she dead? Oh, yeah. Can can I, th I believe the girl that gives you those things can die, and then you're pretty much screwed. So there's that too. Uh, got a load of guards over there. It's actually quite nice that those guards are like slightly extended down that area there because it does mean that shit I extended that because it does mean oh no and that's going to get my Angchu killed because they're way too far forward. It does mean that that uh, assault over there is going to be somewhat delayed and then the minions delay this one here. I don't know whether that's really working in my favour but we do get to kill the ones on the stairs. I, I would say roughly in time for the next assault. But as you can see another wave's coming through there. Oh this bit's so hard. I hope I don't fail here. If I do this first time, I'll be so happy. So very happy. Yes, there was some other stuff that I was t t uh, thinking about and that I wanted to talk about. Um, 
you know this this law series that I, I've been trying to do. Well, the the art is just taking, um, and you know, it's it's not the artist's fault, but it's taking way longer than I thought it was it was going to like abs uh, so much longer. So, and it doesn't look like it's going to be done in any time soon at all. So, what I'm thinking of doing is, uh, and this might change the content of the summary series very slightly, but what I'm thinking of doing is having a like a second um, series that I do before that comes out, which is going to be like a timeline. So, um, as you guys might know, in the books, in, in like the uh, blah, 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 Ghost of Ascalon and Edge of Destiny, I completely forgot the name of them for a second, in, in those <laughs> books, on the first page there's like a timeline of all the stuff that happened in, like, that's established in, in Guild Wars lore, which I think is quite cool. So what I'm going to do is there will be a lot of people that have seen that or certain timelines or they go to Guild Wars 2 Guru and they see, not get Guru, sorry, Guild Wars 2 Wiki and they see that timeline and they think, well, what's all this stuff? So I'm thinking of doing a series where uh, I just do a video and some of them might only be like five minutes long because there's not too much to explain. But I go through each of those points on that timeline and explain exactly what was happening in the story there. And that will lead up to the start of Prophecies at which point hopefully then the Law Summary series will start which could be quite cool. Uh, and yeah, look at that. Much easier than I thought it was going to be. I don't know. Maybe my team just slowly through minor alterations and refinements as we've been playing has got pretty damn good, I've got to say. Uh, Menno says, we've done it. We've won. And he says, thank you, Tom. Without you, the monastery surely would have fallen. Hey, it's no problem. And Sin's here. I believe she has dialogue for us. She says, looks like I showed up just in time. Uh, Headmaster, our scouts report ministry boats on the horizon. Always so timely, we say. It seems it's time for us to take our leave. Yeah, because they don't quite like us. Even though we're here, they're, we're the heroes. And Menno says, leave, but you're the heroes of the day. Yeah, well said, Menno. And uh, we say, I've seen what the ministry does to heroes that do not share their convictions. Yep, just like before at, uh, what's it called? Yeah, Seamai. I wanted to call it Seamai, but for some reason I thought that was in the city for some reason. Uh, I heard rumours about your falling out with the ministry, but I did not realise the extent of your disagreement. Perhaps if I speak with them on your behalf, I could speak to Reiko. And we say, I thank you for the offer, but I think it's due time I speak with her myself. Besides, I think someone else is waiting to speak with you. And it's Sin, and she says, oh, Menlo, we have some planning to do. Again, obviously only hard mode. You get to see that. I hope you guys are happy. Look at all these items I haven't picked up because I've got a full inventory. Jesus. And uh, Menlo says, by the six, what have I agreed to? So he's still kind of begrudging about it, which I like. Oh, you'll be so happy, Menlo. So that's like the second wedding that I talked about in Guild Wars 2 Daily a while ago. Um, I think it's cool, though. I like it. It's a reason... I mean, they did some stuff. This isn't the only thing. Don't get me wrong. There's something else in the next quest uh, that really encourages people to play in hard mode outside of just the typical rewards, which I really, really liked. And I thought uh, John Stummy and everyone that worked on it did a good job. And I would have liked it if Warren Kreiter had something similar because there's no reason to do that in hard mode whatsoever. Um, except, obviously, as I say, a little bit more experience because experience is so important. Oh, and that was only about a 20-minute episode as well. Oh, that's crazy. Ah, yes, awesome. Okay, well, I hope you guys enjoyed this with that video. I've got all that crap there. 79 feathers, and that's not too shabby. Let's uh let's delete something. Let's have a look here. Longsword, I don't need you. See, feathers are worth quite a lot. There we go. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this. This was cool. I did. I certainly did. Oh, wait. Oh, I thought that was a Tengu summoning stone that dropped for me for a second. I got very confused. Uh Kaolin says. Uh, well done, Tom Bluewood. You defended the monastery and, perhaps more importantly, greatly weakened the Sansali. This was a desperation move and their numbers will be greatly depleted by it. Of course, that hasn't stopped the Ministry of Purity. Uh, I suppose if he calls it a desperation move there, that kind of answers what I was talking about at the start of the episode. Of course, that hasn't stopped the Ministry of Purity from using this attack to propose a new law banning all Tengu from Kantha. I wouldn't be surprised to learn that the reason they were not there to defend the monastery was because they wanted it to fall to the Tengu, just so that they could point to that to pass their hateful law. But I digress. There was, this was a great victory, and you have our thanks. I would say you should stay and celebrate, but I believe our mutual friend would like to speak to you in the Shenzhen Tunnels. The final quest as he just hinted at us there, is given to us by none other than Miku herself. Could it be any other way? And this will conclude Winds of Change. And this is going to be the last quest. Uh, it's about time we speak to Reiko ourselves. What could that mean? What's Miku found out? Does she know where we can get to Reiko? I guess we'll find out tomorrow, guys. And until then, I guess I'll see you.